Hi everybody, Alf is back to talk to you about a public service you most likely have never heard of. So, what is happening if on the last weekend of June you suddenly see a bunch of cars with funny antennas having trailers behind them that are carrying antenna masks, generators, all kinds of radio paraphernalia, and the communication trailer of emergency management? Aliens. Ha! Well, not quite, not quite. In this case, it is a civil protection exercise disguised as a competition. But let's go back to a serious case that we had a few years back in Australia, where as you can see, the bush was really burning. And the first thing that went with the bush is the power lines and the communication lines. The normal radio equipment of law enforcement and fire department are not designed to cover large distances. Maybe 20 miles, maybe 30 miles, but that's about the end of it. So, who do we turn to? Well, most likely it will be radio amateurs. They have the equipment and sometimes they even have the time. Two organizations were established in the USA for disaster relief. One was IRIS, established in 1935. This standby radio service consists of licensed amateur radio operators who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment with the local leadership. The other one, called RACES, was established by the government and is part of the normal civil protection services. The scenario we are dealing with is that there is a disaster big enough so you have to go outside your normal living spaces or your normal surroundings and build up a communication station. The first thing to go up will be tents and right after the communications masts. Right after the communications mass, the radio stations proper will be set up. And that was what I intended to read. No, I've, I've watched five before, it's not that good. This station will consist of two voice transmitters and one digital data transmitter. And now the antennas are connected. Finally, Old Glory gets put on the mast and the station is ready for business. From this point on, the station will transmit and receive data for the next 24 hours.
From this point on, the station will be operated in shifts by three people. Two people who operate the voice services, one logger and one operator, and one person who operates the digital services. The next morning finds all glory still waving, all masts are still standing, and the station is still operational. And once again, the Warren County Amateur Radio Society has demonstrated that they can successfully install a station in case of emergency and operate it successfully. <laughs>